Welcome back. Uh, let me get this a little bit better centered. There we are. Okay, now I'm kind of in the middle of the video. And when I set back the light, kind of lights up my whole face. So that's a good thing. Okay. Um, first thing, you guys really did a nice job with your essays. Um, you, you went into detail. You really explained things well. Um, and your comments on each, other es on each other's essays indicated you really read other people's essays, gave it some thought. You were willing to say, wow, I never thought of that. That's really a neat idea. Um, don't be afraid to disagree with what somebody says. That's not a bad thing, okay? You know, if somebody says something that you just don't see how it could work at all, then, then be willing to say it. That doesn't necessarily mean you're saying that other person is wrong, but just that you don't understand how they came to that idea. But, but in general, you folks did such a good job and I love the way you referred to specifics, specific ideas in each other's essays. Um, you did a very, very good job on it. I was extremely pleased. One person was maybe a little too clinical, um, didn't really spell their ideas out very well. Um, and I think that was also the one person who did not contact me with the uh, answer to the video question, okay? Um, so. Uh, actually, I, I generally like to have a little more profound video question. Well, I'm going to give you two video questions now, and you can answer them both at the same time. Um, one of them is this. Please email me. Um, texting doesn't have your name in. When you email it, it has your name, so you don't have to bother typing in your name. Okay, so email me um, with the answer to this question, first of all. Do you have edition 11 or edition 12 of the book, okay? Um, because I asked the bookstore to get edition 11, but uh, it seems like they got edition 12. Oh, what happened? There we go. Um, you know, it seems like they got edition 12 instead of edition 11. So if, if some of you have 12 and some of you have 11, that's okay. I can make that work. Um, what it means is that I have to put in pages for both each time, okay? Uh, and therefore, I can only use pieces of literature that happen to appear in both books because they, the two books are not, the 11th edition and the 12th edition are not exactly the same. So uh, please, you know, uh, question number one is, is uh, let me know um, the answer to whether you have the 11th or 12th edition. The second question, um, you probably won't be able to answer until you read and think about um, A Rose for Emily, which is a story we're talking this, about this week. But I'll give you the question right now so that, so that you have it, and then as you go forward, you can, you can think about it. And the question is this, why didn't Homer Barron want to marry Miss Emily, Emily Grierson, okay? Um, so think about that one, too, you know, uh, as you read the story. Okay, so what we're talking about this week is the concept of plot. Now, the video looks like it's kind of jumpy. Um, I hope it's more smooth than what I'm seeing here, but I'm pretty sure you see my voice smoothly in all of this anyway. Okay, the video every so often does strange things. Now it looks smooth again. Anyway, um, we want to talk about the concept of plot and what plot is is a, a series of actions that help tell us a story, okay? The plot is um, actions, a series of actions that are governed by the characters in the story, the personalities of the characters in the story, and they're also governed by time. And these series of actions uh, bring us to some kind of a conflict. Uh, to have anything going on in literature, you have to have some kind of a conflict, something that's that's pretty important. Um, a lot of times it's, it's a, you know, this kind of conflict, not necessarily, but most of the time it is. Um, so you have to have a, a series of actions um, that, that lead towards, towards some kind of a conflict, and those series of actions are kind of directed by the characters in there, okay? Now, plots can be 
sequential, which means they can go in a straight time order, or they can be non-sequential or non-linear. So a plot can be linear, sequential, or non-linear, non-sequential. What does is, what is non-sequential, non-linear mean? That means the things in the, in the story don't necessarily happen in strict time order, okay? And in A Rose for Emily, you'll see a really powerful example of that because the story actually starts at almost the very end. And then we get the other things that happen that take us to the end, okay? So don't be confused by that. And in the lesson this week that I have typed out for you, I encourage you to create a timeline for the things that happen. And you already have that knowledge that uh, what, what happens in the beginning of the story is just about the end of the story. So therefore, draw a timeline, but put what happens in the beginning just about at the end of the timeline because there's very little that happens after that. And then you can fill in the other things that happen in the story as you go along. That'll help you understand the timeline. Okay, so that's that's really what plot is, um, and you have to have plot to have a story, you know. So plot is not the same as theme; those are different things, and we'll talk about themes later on in the semester. Okay, um, but the plot is the sequence of actions uh, created by the characters, um, and and the the time that they happen in and it all brings you to some kind of a conflict. Okay, so I've said all of that three times now. You should get the idea. I wanna tell you a little bit about William Faulkner who wrote this story, uh, because literature really very often reflects the culture of the author. Not always, but frequently. Literature reflects the culture that the author knows, okay? I don't want you to think that literature is always autobiographical, because you already know that's not true but literature does reflect something that happens inside the author and, again, his, his culture, his world, okay? So, Faulkner grew up in the South. Well, this story is set in the South. In fact, this story is set in a changing South. We're going from the old South, just post-Civil War, right after the days of plantations and slavery and such, to the new South where... Uh, people had to go out and get real jobs, and they had to build a normal industrialized economy rather than just cotton plants and tobacco refining, tobacco businesses. They had to develop a whole new industrial world for themselves. So people went from a very slow, easy life to something more akin to the life that, that in the North we've always lived. Okay, So it, it's a change there. Uh, well, Faulkner... Faulkner's family was kind of like Old South, except that he was born in the 1890s. So the, so the Old South was really fading away, and Faulkner was getting to know the New South. In the story, he paints Miss Emily, who kind of represents much of the Old South, not completely, but much of it. Um, but she's surrounded by the New South. She's surrounded by a world where things happen, and, and even the house that she lives in shows us that. Okay, her reactions to things. That, that shows us that, that the South is changing. So, um, you know, Faulkner grew up in that kind of world. Faulkner was the kind of guy who was very independent, and you'll see that Miss Emily is very independent. Um, after Faulkner uh, volunteered, he, he grew up in Mississippi, but he volunteered for the Canadian Air Force. He wasn't old enough to get into the American, but he volunteered for the Canadian Air Force. Uh, he never really got into battle. The war was over before his training was finished. But, um, um, you know, that was something he wanted to do, okay? And then after that, he did some college, didn't really love college, took a few courses. But while he was at college, he got himself appointed postmaster of the college post office. But he didn't do a good job at that. He was very lackadaisical because he really wanted to be a writer. And he said he didn't want to be subject to every SOB who had two cents for a postage stamp. And then at one point, he got invited, later on in his life, he got invited to the, to the White House for a presidential dinner, 
And he said, you know, it's awfully far to go just for dinner. So he didn't even go to the White House. That's the kind of independent guy he was, okay? Well, you'll see that reflected in Emily, you know? So this is a fascinating story. It's a very different story. Um, you, you may have to read it twice. You may not. I don't know. Um, but, but, you know, just kind of take it in. Absorb the kind of person Emily is. Absorb the kinds of experiences she goes through. Um, and see what you can put together. And again, as, as so many of you did with your first essays, always be willing to bring in experiences that you may have had for yourself because that just makes it better for all of us, okay? Questions, you know where to get me, and please never be concerned about getting in touch with me. I am here for you, okay? Have a good one.